Monday Night Raw last night was trash. Chips. Like, WWE, y'all are making it harder and harder and harder to be a fan of pro wrestling in 2021. Yes, you have done awesome things, like put the WWE Championship on people who deserved it for a minute. That's cool. You gave women the main event of WrestleMania. Wonderful. You gave two black women the main event of WrestleMania. I love that shit. But the booking, now that we are, what, in October? Even before then, the booking throughout the year has just been so hard to get through. It's like a rinse and repeat. Monday comes around, Raw comes around, and it just defeats us. It drains us. It's so bad that it's like, damn. Why do I still watch wrestling? And then by the time Wednesday comes around, AEW pulls up with Dynamite. They gather all the Dragon Balls and they revive your belief in pro wrestling again. And Friday comes around, Roman Reigns and the Bloodline do their thing. They remind you of how good WWE can possibly be. And it, and it brings you hope again for WWE's product. And then Monday comes back around and then it goes right back to the rinse and repeat like, damn, yo, WWE is garbage. And then WWE being bad makes you think that pro wrestling altogether is bad because they have been at the forefront for so long. Hopefully one day WWE will get it together. I, I, I believe in them. I believe in them. You could have been anywhere in the YouTube world, but you are here with me. And I appreciate that. Welcome back to House A Views. And I'm actually surprised that it took me this long to come around and start doing any type of review on wrestling, especially me, especially anybody who knows me, who knows my cloth and the, the shit that I like. My number one will always be music, but number two, pro wrestling. For sure, pro wrestling has always been one of my favorite forms of media ever since like, what, 97? Anyway, here's my review of last night's Monday Night Raw in 2.5. So the night starts off with a segment from Drew McIntyre. Drew pretty much goes on and says that he can't wait to have his match for the WWE Championship with Big E. Big E comes out and interrupts him. They go back and forth a little bit. Then the Usos come out, the SmackDown Tag Team Champions, or on Monday Night Raw, sure. But they interrupt Big E and Drew. Then they tease the tag team match that they're gonna have later on in the night. After that, we get our first round match of the king of the ring tournament on the raw bracket we got our smackdown bracket matches last week and the results are here and these are the tournament brackets so far last night we got our first round matches on the raw side the first match was between xavier woods and ricochet x grills the crown and to be honest i feel like xavier woods is going to take it all the way this would be a good way to build him up to be a solid singles competitor i felt like They've always struggled with X as far as trying to showcase if he could, you know, rock as a singles competitor. He always looked good whenever he was, he was in a tag team match. Anyway, X faces Ricochet in the first round. A nice little solid back and forth match. A couple of spots that I liked. X did a, uh, a Brett's rope leg drop. <laughs> Shout out to OSW Review. It's like a little inside thing with them. Brett's rope is like the middle rope. Brett Hart used to always jump off that middle rope whenever he did like a, a rope move. So whenever there's anything that's off the middle rope, Brett's rope. X did a leg drop off of Brett's rope, which is cool. A real weird spot is when Ricochet kept doing the suicide dive. He did like three in a row. The first time was good and then he connected the second time. I don't know what made him do it a third time, but he did it a third time. He missed Xavier Woods. X rolled him back in the ring. It's his finisher, I guess. One, two, three. And Xavier Woods moves on to the next round. The next match of the night is a tag team match between the newly reformed Hurt Business, Shelton Benjamin, and Cedric Alexander. Once again, a team, once again, rocking with Bobby Lashley. You know I rock with that. You know I rock with that. They are going against the team of Mansoor and Mustafa Ali. Mustafa Ali. I don't know why they started to pronounce his name differently. Hopefully that was a request by him, I guess, whatever. But yeah, tag match. Match was a straight up nothing match. A couple of spots here and there, nothing crazy. Hurt Business wins. They teased a breakup between Mustafa Ali and, um, <laughs> and Mansoor. 
Oh man, Raw is Raw was just chips all together. Raw was chips. This is the first nothing match of many nothing matches of the night. Ah, get comfortable, guys. Get comfortable. The next is another first round match. This time in the Queen's Crown Tournament. Yes, this year will be the first time where we get not only the return of the King of the Ring, but we also get a tournament for the women. We get the Queen's Crown Tournament. Over on Raw, we have the first round between Shayna Baszler and Dana Brooke. The second I saw the bracket, listen, Dana Brooke has always jobbed, will always job, and as long as she is in the WWE, she will do the job until she goes over to AEW, change her name, they'll build up a little bit. Come on now. We, we all know that's gonna happen. Much respect to Dana. You know, nothing against her for um, you know, her performance and her ability. You know, she's very talented, but the way that WWE has booked her, similar to all the other NXT call-ups, they've done nothing with her ever since she's been on main. So the second I saw that bracket, I knew that Shayna Baszler was gonna take that one. Match was nothing, like how I said, is is gonna be plenty of nothing matches throughout this night. Um Dana runs to the um corner where Shayna was. She misses. Dana Brooke made a couple of pin attempts. Shayna reversed her pin attempt. One, two, three. Shayna Baszler wins the match. Um, after the match, Shayna tried to put in her little headlock, and then Dana walked out, and then whatever. Nothing match. Shayna moves on in the tournament. <sighs> after the Dana versus Shayna Queen's Crown match, we get a promo from Charlotte Flair. She's pretty much teasing the tag team match that's going to happen later on in the night with her and Becky taking on Sasha Banks and Bianca Belair. Charlotte goes on to say how she's better than all of them. You know, the same thing that she does all the time. I'm the queen, no one's better than me. Woo, I'm Ric Flair's daughter. I mean, nothing against Charlotte. She's one of the best, one of the best on their roster. But then it just goes back to booking, man. It, it'll always be the booking that will be the doom of anybody on WWE's roster. You could be the best talent on the planet, but how you are booked will always determine how you look in the WWE. After Charlotte's promo, we get a match between Matt Riddle and Omos. Omos is still green as baby sh <laughs> but it's still cool to see him get his one-on-one -on -one matches. Or so I thought, I thought we were gonna get a one-on-one -on -one match, but when the bell rung, Matt Riddle decided to, you know, stall a little bit. He was clearly stalling. He just goes on a tangent and starts rambling about literally nothing. You could hear the crowd start to groan. You could hear the crowd start to boo. You could hear the crowd get frustrated because they have their intelligence being insulted once again by WWE. Isn't it just awesome being a fan of pro wrestling? After a while of stalling and it not working, Matt Rule yells out, now, Randy, now. Randy Orton, come out now. Randy Orton is his tag team partner and one half of the Raw Tag Team Champions with Matt Riddle. There's no Orton in sight, no I hear voices, none of that. Orton doesn't come out. Omos starts going off on Matt Riddle. AJ Styles picks up the mic and, you know, he starts talking mad mess against Matt Riddle. He encourages Omos to do the stiffest roundhouse kick I've ever seen. It was actually impressive to see Omos get his leg as high off the ground as he did. As high as he did, you know. It didn't come off the ground that high, but the fact that he got it off that high, I give, I give it to Omos. I give it to him. But it was a nothing match. Then he did his little two-handed release choke slam thing. I don't know. I never liked the two-handed choke slam. <laughs> but whatever. One, two, three. Omos wins. At least we got somewhat of a match. Then we get a segment between Drew McIntyre and the WWE Champion Big E. They're pretty much going, hey, let's try to get along tonight. Let's try to coexist. Let's get along, get this out the way. And then we can meet up at Crown Jewel, settle business for the WWE Championship. And then that's it. They do this little segment when they do like a, a parody of the Mega Powers, Hulk Hogan and Macho Man, when they became a tag team. When he's doing a whole... <laughs> Like when he was doing that, <laughs> I felt like that was pretty cool. It just reminds you that a lot of today's talent, it's just a bunch of, you know, kids who grew up as wrestling nerds and then they're now they're out there, you know, living their dreams and they could be able to wrestle, but they always reference the past. But whenever they do, I kind of like when they do. Next, we get a promo from the former WWE champion, Bobby Lashley, who will be taking on Goldberg 
at next week's crown jewel pay-per-view bobby lashley cut a promo on pretty much what's been going on between him and goldberg over the past month the whole thing with his son getting involved in the match that they had in SummerSlam, and lashley pretty much goes hey look what happened with your son was a complete misunderstanding but what's going to happen at crown jewel won't you will not beat the almighty but let's be real, Goldberg's probably going to get his win back now that Lashley isn't the WWE champion and we don't have to worry about them putting the belt on Goldberg. Goldberg's definitely going to get his win back. Come on now. We've watched enough WWE to know about their 50-50 booking style. And whenever a babyface loses, it's only a matter of time for they get their win back. Next, we have a segment with Sasha Banks giving her promo about the tag team match. Earlier in the night, we got the promo from Charlotte and now it's Sasha's turn. She goes on to say how she's better than her own tag team partner, Bianca. She says how she's better than Charlotte. She says how she's better than Becky. I'm sorry that whenever these segments come up, it sounds like I'm giving, you know, these talented, talented, talented professional wrestlers. <laughs> it's like I'm giving them all sh But by the time this tag match comes up, you'll understand why. You'll understand why I'm giving these little promos. <laughs> you'll see. You'll see, stay tuned. Next, we have a match between Jeff Hardy and NXT call-up slash newcomer Austin Theory. Actually, this isn't necessarily uh, his new coming. I think he debuted on the main roster, then they sent him back to NXT, then now he's back on main. Whatever, he has a match with Jeff Hardy. This match is pretty short, a little back and forth. It ends with Austin Theory getting a roll-up after a missed attempt of the swan time bomb <laughs> now all the times in jeff hardy's career where he missed the swan time bomb i don't think i've ever seen anyone roll him up immediately afterwards why why did it take till just now to do it i mean they could put it into a storyline like austin theory like yo i grew up watching jeff hardy so i knew that once i dipped off with the dip the swan time bomb I'm good. I could win a match from there. They could have did that. They could still do it. But um, last week, they teased that Jeff Hardy would be bringing his Willow gimmick, the gimmick that he had over in TNA. They teased that Jeff Hardy needs a, that Jeff Hardy was going to come back with a new appearance, that, um, you know, a new character. So, I mean, he did say new. He didn't say the return of one. So even though the hype says Willow's coming, he's probably going to uh, debut some BS gimmick. I mean, then again, I trust Jeff Hardy and I trust his artistry, so it might be actually really good. But it might be similar to Matt Hardy when Matt Hardy came back to WWE and they changed Broken Matt to Woken Matt. They might do the same thing with Jeff. They might turn Willow to, to I don't know, Brillo or some some bull. <laughs> I don't know. WWE has never failed at failing me <laughs> so who knows what's gonna happen next we get another first round king of the ring elimination match we have kofi kingston going against gender mahal two former wwe champions fighting in the first round of the king of the ring pretty cool so this goes back to me and just being very curious about what goes on in the writing room when WWE decides to do <laughs> that they do? I know sometimes they probably don't want to come off as obvious with their booking choices, but sometimes the obvious choice is the best choice. So earlier in the night, prior to X's match, his King of the Ring match, they teased like you know what would you guys do if you guys would face each other in the king of the ring they kept dancing around the question so my thing is this why why the f would you do that why the f would you go through all that trouble just for kofi to lose his match to gender so now they won't even face each other in the king of the ring tournament i get it you know xavier was interfered in the match trying to hold off genders peoples and you know that could lead to some type of you know dissension between kofi and xavier woods but are they really about to make kofi kingston a heel i don't remember kofi kingston being a heel during his wwe run at all i feel like he's something similar to Rey mysterio like even though they were probably in storylines where they could have potentially be the one in the wrong they were still betrayed as being a babyface. Like, I don't ever remember Kofi being a heel. So I guess 
with the career that he's had so far in WWE, the next, you know, revitalizing move, something to give him something new to do, something for his character, a heel Kofi Kingston? A heel Kofi Kingston might be very interesting. But anyway, Jinder Mahal won his match, and he's moving on in the tournament. So for the semis, we have on the Raw side, Xavier Woods versus Jinder Mahal. And on the SmackDown side, we have Finn Balor versus somebody. I don't know. The brackets are right here. And by the time Crown Jewel pops up, we're probably going to have Finn Balor versus Xavier Woods. Which would make Xavier Woods look really good if he wins this whole thing. He has to get through gender to get to the winner of Finn and whoever Finn is facing. I'm so sorry I don't remember that. And for Xavier Woods to become king of the ring after beating Jinder Mahal, who was a former WWE champion, and Finn Balor, who was a former Universal champion, it'll look really good for X as far as, you know, building up his, you know, his status, his, his image as a singles competitor. It sucks that king of the ring, you don't necessarily get anything. Like, yeah, you get the crown and you get the throne, but you don't get how it used to be back in the day when whenever you would win King in the Ring, you would get a number one contender spot for whatever championship that you choose or whatever the main championship is. So it would have been nice if, you know, to see X win the entire tournament, go through Kofi to win the tournament, then end up facing Big E for the WWE Championship, or they could tie in the whole fact that Xavier got involved in Kofi's match and then we could have the new day triple threat for the wwe championship book it book it as far as a long going story for a stable that would be crazy if we get that triple threat between the new day i would love if they book it but for some reason whenever biggie comes out like he has some crowd engagement but it's like they don't make enough noise for him and i feel like the writers pay attention to that i feel like vince pays attention to that and crown jewel is going to be very telling Hopefully Big E retains, but I feel like they're going to put the belt back on Drew. I can feel it in the air, which doesn't make sense because Drew got drafted to SmackDown. And I don't know. We'll, we'll cross that bridge when it's time. Let's get back to the Raw review. Let's get back to the Raw review. Then after that match, we get the promo from Becky Lynch talking about the tag team match that they teased in the beginning of the night with the Raw and SmackDown champions facing Bianca Belair and Sasha. Oh, boy. Becky cuts a promo. I'm better than her. I'm better than her, her. And I'm better than the third, her. I'm the man and I'm the best ever, whatever. I don't, man. Now, let's just get to the match and why I've been burying them throughout this entire review. So then we finally get to the tag team match between Charlotte Flair and Becky Lynch versus Bianca Belair and Sasha Banks. And before the bell could even ring, Bianca and Sasha are at each other's necks. They try to, <laughs> they start whipping each other into the corner and they start teasing a little fight. Then Becky Lynch breaks that up and then Charlotte tries to break it up. And then Charlotte and Becky start fighting and then now all four of them start fighting and then it just turns to one big scrap. And I'm thinking they're about to throw the match away. I'm like, bro, don't tell me they spent this entire show teasing this awesome tag team match that looks good on paper just to throw it away which is a very wwe move so i'm just looking like are you serious are you serious and then out comes sonya deville and adam pierce adam and sonya restart the match they still haven't clearly defined their roles in the wwe they're just people with suits who make decisions and they can still go so if they ever decide to wrestle i guess they could come back when they want to spoiler and they say, oh, no, we have four of the top talent in the women's division in the WWE. Y'all not going to do this. No, restart the match. We're definitely going to have a match. So then the match starts. <laughs> Even though we had like a good back and forth between both teams, what carried the match itself was the, you know, can they coexist storyline between the respective teams? You have Bianca and Sasha you know, hitting each other whenever they tag in and out. You got Charlotte and Becky hitting each other whenever they tag in and out. But the team of the half four horsewomen, Charlotte and um, Becky, they ended up winning a match when Becky hit her quote unquote manhandle slam, which is a sloppy ass rock bottom, which is worse than a bookend. Don't get me started. Whatever. 
Charlotte and Becky win their tag match. Let's just move on to the next match of the night. Next, we have our final King of the Ring slash Queen's Crown round match of the night. We have Natalia versus Dewdrop. I'm not too familiar with Dewdrop, but I heard that during her time in NXT UK as Piper, she was really doing good. But um, ever since they called up to Raw, they paired her with Eva Marie. Now they took her off Eva Marie, and now she have her little nice little singles run going. She's very fresh, very new. And when it comes to Natalia, let's be real. She is what I call a superstar jobber. She's been there for a very long time. She could either elevate whatever talent that she's going against and be the jobber, or she could be the superstar if you need somebody to put the belt on. She's similar to, she's pretty much the Dolph Ziggler of the women's division. And I love Natalia. Natalia's been rocking for a minute. I wish that she had more success in the WWE. She's had a fair share, you know, Divas Championships, SmackDown Championships, Tag Championships, but let's be real, superstar jobber. Do drop on a match, by the way. <laughs> Do drop moves on to the tournament. So over on SmackDown, we have Zelina Vega and Carmella going against each other. And on Raw, we have Dewdrop and Shayna Baszler. Look at that bracket. Look at that bracket and tell me that Shayna Baszler isn't going to win the whole thing. But right before the main event, we get a segment with Mustafa Ali. Mustafa? 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 Tomato? Tomato? Potato? Potato? Whatever you want to call the mother... <laughs> There's a segment between Mustafa Ali and Mansoor. Ali pretty much tells Mansoor, hey, look, you ain't, you ain't never gonna be, and as long as you were around me, you ain't doing for me, so go off. And then Mansoor does the whole, you know, I guess he's a baby face, so they made him do the whole, oh, I'm so hurt. And then Ali just runs back up and starts beating the dog. <laughs> this segment was actually very funny. Early in the night, they teased that they were going to break up, and then Ali just rolls up on him, beats him up. You know, don't got don't got much to get across there. It was a really, really good segment, in my opinion, just because it was just funny to see Ali beat up uh, Mansoor. It sucks that they're breaking him up this early. I would have liked to see them have, you know, a Raw Tag Championship run. But, you know, WWE, whenever they have tag teams that make sense, they break them up. And they take tag teams that don't make sense and just throw random people together. Does WWE ever let you down at letting you down? Then we finally get to our main event of the night. Our main event nothing match of the night. The final nothing match of the night. Drew McIntyre and Big E, WWE champion Big E, going against the SmackDown tag team champions, the Usos. Looked like it was going pretty good. Some BS happens. Drew and Big E start fighting each other. Match comes down to a non finish. Whatever, whatever, man. Whatever, whatever. Just roll credits, Raw's over. Oh my God. I'm not saying that every single show has to be action packed or be good or be entertaining, but at least try. At least try. And then when something makes sense for it to be good, let it slide. They should have had this match come down to a finish. They should have had Drew and Big E beat these two just for them two to get chewed out by Roman when they go back to SmackDown on Friday. They should have had the, um, oh man, they should have gave the women's matches for the Queen's Crown more time. Those matches were literally done in record time. They were like, I want to say a minute or not even that, like 45 seconds. And the same thing happened on SmackDown. They gave them like little to no time. SmackDown kind of makes sense because the show's two hours, but Raw is three hours. You tell me that you can give them more time? You couldn't, you know, book the Matt Riddle and Omos match a different way where Matt Riddle didn't have to waste all that time stalling. You could have gave one of the women's matches more time, bro. It, it wasn't even a lot of talking segments throughout the night. I don't understand how they can manage to compress three hours. Like, three hours is a long time to get a lot of shit off. 
but for some reason, whenever you give WWE more time, like, uh, it, the show was three hours, but it was the tightest three hours known to man. I don't understand it. But anyway, this is my first review of like my wrestling stuff, wrestling content. But um, my grading system I'm going to do is going to be anywhere between one and four. One meaning immaculate. If it was the best that it could ever possibly be, it is immaculate, 100% immaculate. The second grading system is smooth. Like it's not bad. Like it's not good, but it's not bad. It's like second place, you know, like just that tier right below immaculate. Like it was good, but it was alright good. So smooth, smooth. The third, the third is mid, mid. Like it wasn't the worst thing that I've possibly seen but it was damn near bad. It was impassable. You could do anything else with your life. You'll be all right if you miss out on that. So we'll just call it mid. And the final, the final bracket, the bottom of the bottom, chips, chips. It was so bad it can't be salvaged. Pack it up, pack him up, throw the trash out. It was garbage. We'll just call it chips. And guess what this episode of Raw was? chips and that was my review of this week raw <laughs> and this is my review of this week's raw goddamn wwe i can't wait till wednesday when i review dynamite dynamite's pretty you know AEW's been pretty consistent so i can't wait to review that if this is the way i'm going to spend every tuesday morning i don't know it's it's a different thing like i've I watched wrestling for a very long time but now that i'm I, now that I have made myself sit down to actually review it, now I actually have to really, really watch a match. No YouTube highlights. Like, I have to really watch a whole episode to dissect it and see how I feel about it. For a very long time, Raw has been bad. Raw has the ingredients to be better, and hopefully they do better. With that being said, this has been House A Views. And until next time, peace.